Distinguished delegates, uh, dear colleagues, it's an immense privilege to be presenting on the launch of the new Lancet tuberculosis series. My colleagues on the fourth paper included Katrina Ortblad, Till Barnikhausen, and George Solomon. Our paper focused on stopping tuberculosis, where we suggest a biosocial mo model for sustainable development. Tuberculosis is a global challenge. It's been dubbed by some as the perfect expression of an imperfect civilization. This statement is very much in line with the, the sustainable development goals and aims to improve social well-being of everyone around the globe, in particular for those who are greatly disadvantaged, the, the poor and the disenfranchised. In the last decades, the world has enjoyed economic development as well as scientific and social advances, thanks in part to the MDGs that have provided a great impetus, fighting infectious diseases, but also alleviating poverty. Yet, there's a high burden of tuberculosis worldwide, affecting particularly the poor and susceptible populations. Since the launch of the MDGs, there's been large funding for tuberculosis, but this has yielded progress by reducing mortality but smaller reductions in incidence, and much less so compared to HIV and malaria. Estimates of the pace of the decline in the tuberculosis incidence range from less than 1% to 1.5%. While moving in the right direction downwards, one would argue that these are not very impressive achievements. And the achievements, of course, vary by country and region. We, we argue that an emerging asymmetry between what tuberculosis fight needs and what is being provided to address it. Tuberculosis has its roots in underdevelopment, poverty and social exclusion. But worldwide efforts to address tuberculosis during the past decades have emphasized predominantly biomedical solutions. And the slow progress in the fight against tuber tuberculosis since the 1990s are due in part to the gaps in coverage of DOTS worldwide, but more importantly, because of the failure to address social drivers of the epidemic. And this is what this paper predominantly focuses on. In order to address tuberculosis and to strengthen our fight, we can learn from the past. Because the past approaches to tu tuberculosis uh, management was predominantly social approaches such as improved nutrition and enhancement of social conditions, which evidently in many countries contribute to reducing both the burden of tuberculosis and the suffering from it. And much of the gains, as we will see later on, has happened in the pre-chemotherapy era of 1950s. If you look at age-standardized tuberculosis deaths in England by sex, from 1901 to 2001, we can see a trend line that has gone down from 1900s to uh, 1970s, with spikes that coincide with the Great Wars, the First World War and the Second World War, and with a sharp decline. But in, in these times, the social well-being and the uh, economic development of, the, of England also improved. And we can see a flattening of the response after the chemotherapy era in the 1960s and onwards. We see a similar picture in many other countries. So while there has been a decline in agent standardized tuberculosis deaths around the world, the, the rate of decline since the, 19, since the uh, chemotherapy era has, has flattened, has declined. So we need to look for the reasons for this and to find solutions. We argue that there is a response gap in the fight against tuberculosis. It is well known that tuberculosis has strong roots in social determinants. But despite TB having a strong social determinants, efforts in the past decades have focused on predominantly biomedical solutions. DOTS and the more recent WHO Stop TB strategy have largely emphasized delivery of tuberculosis services, 
supply side interventions underpinned by diagnosis and treatment. These approaches, while laudable and while achieving reductions in mortality, have really not addressed the social determinants that feed tuberculosis. Therefore, more of the same will not do. There's a response gap that needs addressing. So we pose two questions. Has global development bypassed the fight against tuberculosis? And has the current approach to fighting tuberculosis reached its limits? We feel that the answer to these questions is yes. The fight against tuberculosis has been mainly biomedically driven, and development has not benefited tuberculosis as much as it has benefited other conditions. And the current approach has clearly reached these limits. In order to stop TB, we need to think for new solutions. There is good evidence around the world in relation to the social determinants that drive the TB epidemic. These include, among others, poverty, crowded living conditions, especially among the increasingly urbanized populations, indoor air pollution, malnutrition, increasing diabetes mellitus, which is rising in prevalence, especially in low- and middle-income countries, tobacco smoking, alcohol, stigma and social exclusion. Of course, congregate settings with low income levels, uh, such as mine workers that bring together many of the social determinants, have acted as, um, as incubators of tuberculosis and increases uh, transmission in the countries where TB is already highly prevalent. We present in the paper a, a cycle of poverty and tuberculosis, where poor education levels or low education levels and reduction in wealth or low wealth levels feed to poverty. Poverty in turn leads to worsening living conditions, worsening malnutrition, higher risk behaviors, for example, smoking and alcohol, that is more prevalent in lower socioeconomic groups, and higher co-infections, for example, HIV. But poverty also leads to low access to health systems, which is critically important. And these, in turn, increase the susceptibility for tuberculosis and poor access to health systems for those affected by TB means they're not able to access the services when needed. This increases the contagious period and interruptions to treatment, which leads to drug resistance. All of these, in turn, feed the tuberculosis epidemic, which worsens the health in those affected, then reduces productivity at work and time at work, because ill people cannot attend work. And for those affected, higher expenditures, especially where universal health coverage is not sufficient, higher expenditures on TB and other treatments, and interruption of treatment often, which again leads to drug resistance. This in turn leads to further poverty, further impoverishment, which then feeds the cycle again. So we need to have an approach that breaks the cycle. Clearly, a purely med biomedical approach will not solve the, the multitude of factors that are bearing upon tuberculosis epidemic. So the approach must be one that combines biomedical approach as well as social approaches. Let's see what that might look like. We looked in our paper the, the factors influencing tuberculosis or associated with tuberculosis case notification rates, looking at world development indicators of poverty and deprivation. And our findings strongly suggest, uh, using several thousand country years of data, that access to sanitation, improved water source, access to electricity and urban population, these all improve tuberculosis case notification with a strongly significant p-values, whereas malnutrition worsens tuberculosis case notification. Improved primary care enrollment also has a positive effect, as well as low levels of out-of-pocket expenditure. And health system factors such as high uptake of triple vaccine, which we used as an indicator of health system strength, shows that the strong health systems do benefit tuberculosis control to improve tuberculosis case notification. Again, 
where poverty health counters levels are low, both at $1.25 per day and less than $2 per day, have a positive impact on tuberculosis case notification. But disparities, as measured by income share held by the highest 10%, uh, strongly uh, increases case notification uh, for tuberculosis, worsening the TB epidemic. So we can see from this analysis of uh, multiple countries that social and deprivation factors and poverty factors are still at play with a strong association with uh, tuberculosis as measured by tuberculosis case notification. So what do we need to do to stop tuberculosis? We have persistent challenges. Clearly more of the same will not do. We need therefore new solutions. That doesn't mean to say we should throw out what has worked. We need to rediscover and enhance the social approach while further enhancing and building on the biomedical approach that we've been using in the last few decades. That means creating a biosocial approach to stop tuberculosis and in turn to address sustainable development and to contribute to the laudable goals the world has set itself at the New York meeting of the U United Nations General Assembly. Rediscovering and enhancing the social approach will require social protection for tuberculosis risk, especially for the vulnerable populations, such as the elderly and poor families. There is good evidence, even in, richer con in rich countries, such as those of Europe, that social protection does reduce tuberculosis prevalence. Secondly, enhancing the social approach will mean enhancing nutritional value. Again, strong evidence to suggest that improved nutrition improves immunity as well as improves outcomes for tuberculosis. Thirdly, improving the built environment, reduce congregate settings and transmission levels. Fourthly, reducing occu occupational risk, especially those working in extractive in industries. And finally, improving mental health, a group particularly vulnerable to tuberculosis, among other conditions. Looking at the second approach, which is the biomedical approach, this can be further enhanced by developing effective vaccines, probably the most important intervention we could have, developing new treatment approaches, medicines that are easier to take for shorter periods, fix those combinations that are easier to access, Improving tuberculosis detection to ensure early diagnosis and early start of treatment. And leveraging technologies for health beyond the health technologies. For example, mobile telephones and improved information and communication technologies that are used widely in low and middle income countries. Moving forward, a biosocial approach is critical. And when adopted, a biosocial approach will align the tuberculosis response with sustainable development goals. This is critical to ensure that TB response doesn't remain uh, sidelined, but is an integral part of the broad response the world is now putting forward to address poverty and to, to ensure sustainable development for the world as a whole. Secondly, a biosocial approach will extend the responsibility for national TB strategies beyond the health sector. Clearly, a biosocial approach needs a, a social response that goes beyond the health sector. Three, a biosocial approach will catalyze integrated multi-sectoral multi -sectoral action across government sectors, professional groups, civil society, and the private sector. Each of these actors have an important role to play, but they need to come together with a common mission, with shared leadership to address this epidemic that has been with us for thousands of years. And the biosocial approach, if mounted effectively, will stop tuberculosis. Clearly, more of the same will not do. TB is a long-standing challenge and a global problem. This persistent challenge requires a new solution. And this new solution is the biosocial approach. Thank you very much for your attention.